you're there, welcome to World Talk. I am Lisa Wickham and this is the show where we share inspiring stories from all over the world so that you can get that extra oomph that you need perhaps just to get out of bed and do what you need to do. And today I have someone that I am sure you will be elated, just as elated as I am to speak with her. You would be to hear her stories. But before we do that, remember, if you missed any of the episodes, log on to our YouTube channel, Lisa Wickham, and uh, there it is on the screen. And you can get all the missing episodes if you've missed it, or perhaps you loved it so much, you wanna see it again. And if you really loved it, please support us at www.fundmetnt.com where you can be supporting a group of creatives who came together during this entire COVID experience to put together these inspiring stories just for you. All right, now I am very excited because my next guest is uh, the star of uh, Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. We know and love her as Ashley Banks. I remember her from Sesame Street and many of us thought that she was speaking with a Trinidad and Tobago accent, just like mine. I'm going to ask her about that. But in addition to that, she's a Harvard University graduate, Broadway star, actor, singer, philanthropist, activist, and so much more live from Los Angeles. Here is Tatiana Ali. Hi, Tatiana. Hi, Lisa. How are you? I am so good. I am so excited and I'm so happy to be chatting with you once again, you know, and I just wanted to share what I know of you, the real person, the multi-talented person, the mother, the part Trini. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right? Big part. A, big <laughs> part, big part. How have you been, you know, with COVID-19 and the family and so on in LA, what it's been like? Well, uh, we've been very blessed during this time, which is, you know, you have to count your blessings right now. Um, yeah. We spent uh, time, uh, you know, all of our, our, the members of our family separated for a while. Right. And uh, my husband and I live in Northern California. We decided to come to LA. So the whole family, you know, yes. my 95 year old grandma, my mom and dad. Uh, my sisters come in and out, yes. you know, they're, they're kind of staying at home in their mm -hmm. places and they come and the kids. And so yeah. we're all, in fact, my dad, just right as you started, <laughs> came in the room for diapers. Uh, listen, I just love your dad. I just listen, love your dad. He, he is, you know, he's such a real Trini dad. He's a dad from Trinidad and Tobago. And I just love him. He's just so wonderful. But I get a sense that you guys are a really close knit family. Yeah. You're pretty we close. We are. Now. We're mm -hmm. very close. We're yeah. very close. And um and yeah, not too many. We've been we've we've been uh in the same house under the same roof uh <laughs> for about two months now and we're wow. still everybody's still okay. You know, that's good. That's <laughs> All good. the relationships are still intact. <laughs> that's so really good. Really you know, well. we, we hear these horror stories of people like, Oh my gosh, it's too much of family, too close, too close, you know, for so long. And um mm -hmm. When you have your little kids, though, yeah. it's just so wonderful to be able to have that help and that support yeah. from your parents. Yeah. And uh, we're just we're just very thankful they're taking us in. Yeah. So your dad is from Trinidad and Tobago, <laughs> as I said, and you've been here right. for Carnival. You've played mass in Trinidad and Tobago yes, a few I years have. ago. Yeah. Um, I did. <laughs> there you I, are. Those are those are my sisters, <laughs> yeah. Anastasia and Kimberly, that are with me. I'm in the pink, and I felt we all kind of felt like it was a rite of passage. We always heard so much about carnival from yeah. um, people in our family, people outside of our family, and mm -hmm. we had the opportunity to do it. And oh my goodness, yeah, it was it was life changing. I mean, it I, it was incredible. You know, we had um, so much fun. Someone, you know, people have been sending me questions for you and someone said, can she still speak with a Trini accent or can she do a Trini accent? I said, well, I, I, I'm going to ask her. Let me hear your Trini accent. I can try to do, I can try to do the interview with a Trini accent. I know that, uh, you know, Trinidadian accents are a bit different from other Caribbean accents because, you know, Trini's like to sing. <laughs> and uh, they kind of have this beautiful lilting kind of thing going on, even if they're angry at you, you know. So um, I, <laughs> I'll, give, I'll, 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 I'll give it to you. I'll give it to you a little bit, a little bit, a little bit. Okay, okay. <laughs> I'm trying to be conversational. Usually, yeah. when I heard my dad's 
accent really come out. It was yeah. you know, when he was angry at us. But. Yeah. <laughs> what was it like? What was it like um, growing up? You know, with a Trinidadian father, father from Trinidad and Tobago, and a mom from Panama, and you're in the States, mm -hmm. right? So, what was it like? Did you have any references, cultural references? Oh, a ton. You know, me and my cousins were the first generation born in the States. So, as people do in the United States, we kind of had this immigrant enclave. I think yes. that's why we're so close as a family also. Yeah. But my parents were very clear when, you know, what was going on in the American schools was going on over there. And when I stepped inside that house, it was Trinidad and Panama. There's no, <laughs> you know, Panamanians also are, uh, at least my my family came to Panama to, to help with, the, to build the canal. Right. Um, and came from the Caribbean. So culturally, you know, there's language difference, but culturally yes. there, there are actually a lot of similarities. Yes. Um, and now over the course of, you know, decades, my parents' accents have kind of come together. Yes. <laughs> <They're> <laughs> <the same> accent. <laughs> uh, you know, Tatiana, let's talk a bit about you now and life after Fresh Prince. I mean, I don't want to talk too much about what we see in the, in the, you know, in the media and so on, because I want to find out more about mm -hmm. you. You're a Harvard University graduate, you're a Broadway trained actor, you're a singer, philanthropist, uh, your mother, wife, you know, um, you're, you've worked with Barack Obama's campaign, an entrepreneur, you have your own company, Hazra Productions. How do you do it all? How do you manage to do all those multiplicity of things? Um, it sounds very impressive when you list <laughs> <laughs> everything out. Um, I have learned that I can't I can't do everything at the same time <laughs> mm -hmm. I have to we were talking about grace before we before we went on air um, yeah. nothing you know everything was not, now with two little ones now is the real oh okay well you know sleep isn't really that important to <laughs> yeah <laughs> um um, I don't, I don't know. I, I've, I've had a, I started my career very young as you, you know, yeah. are, are, oh, uh, you share, you share yeah. that. Um, and so that gives you a lot of time. I, I found my calling very young and I, and I love what I do. So it's given me time to, to evolve, yes. I think, um, in a way that I'm really grateful, grateful for. Yeah. You know, you, you mentioned that we share that. Um, starting very mm -hmm. young obviously Ashley Banks is international so it, the pressure was probably even probably a thousand times more I would say yeah how do you how did you connect and become your real selves because what I see when I chat with you and we chat separate is a person Tatiana Ali but how do you connect and remain authentic to yourself in this crazy world that is Hollywood and entertainment and business and all of what the world would see? Um, I think at first it really had to do with my parents and family um, really sheltering me and and being that, you know, me as a person, I'm, I'm much more than, you know, the job that I had or the opportunity that I mm -hmm. was given. Um, and they really instill that in me as well, that, that, and in my sisters too, that, you know, we're here to make a contribution. Yeah. So on the one hand, there is what people see, but on the other hand, that's not, you know, that end product or the, 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 the that's not necessarily the, the purpose, yes. you know, the purpose is somewhere deeper and, um, and it's what drives, that's the thing behind the thing that everybody sees. Yeah. Uh, I, I, as I've, you know, matured and, and grown up, I've also found, um, meditation mm -hmm. and that, you know, there's there's you there's an innocence that you have when you're a child and you're just working and you're just doing what you love to do you don't even think it's work you know um but then you grow up and then you start to i don't know if this happened to you but it was certainly my experience i grew up and i started to you know second guess things and mm -hmm. and and you know you start to feel insecure and self-conscious oh, yes. about things oh, yes. that, that in the yeah that when you're a child just it you just have your instinct yes. and it just flows out yes um, and so meditation really yeah. 
you know, it's a constant process for me of self-evaluation yeah. and and really listening to what's going on in my heart and my mind and, yes. and making sure I agree with yes. all the things that yeah. I'm saying to myself. Yeah, you know, I, <laughs> um, I, that's yeah. been helpful. You know, I don't think, I think some people would be flabbergasted to think that, um, well, I went through that as well. You know, you're thinking mm -hmm. about, and uh, am I really... Am I really, uh, should I be in this place? Is this where I need to be at this time? You know, um, yeah. do I deserve all of this? And, or perhaps uh, the esteem issues that sometimes uh, come with being just a regular human being behind all of this that we see. One of my colleagues calls it the imposter syndrome. And she says that, yes. you know, women tend to suffer from the imposter syndrome more than men for some reason. And that we, you're, you're laughing. Why are you smiling at that comment? <laughs> because it's something that I'm actually, I'm actively dealing with right now. I, I told you, you know, I, I do feel that life is, you know, that some of the most exciting parts or aspects of life are those moments where you feel yourself evolving. Yeah. And sometimes it happens in, you know, in, in gradual steps. And then other times it happens in like, a moment you yes just, you see, and you're like oh my goodness everything's changed yes and uh, I'm in one of those moments now um, I told you I've been writing and yeah and uh, and yeah that I have the imposter syndrome I've been talking <laughs> about that and thinking about that quite a bit you yeah. know um, and it's something that not everybody goes through but if you yeah, I'm, I guess I'm still trying to figure it out. So yeah, yeah. I, I, <laughs> I'm, uh, I don't know where it comes from. Yeah, but I think, I think it's good to know that it's normal and that, you know, yeah. I, I may go through it. I don't know what you do, but when you go through it and then you say, listen, I've done this, I've achieved this, let me get on with life, you know? So it's kind of like a cycle. Right. <laughs> yeah. Right, yes. right. And you have to find a way to push through it, yeah. even though you're having those feelings or it might appear as anxiety, it might appear as in different ways for different people. Um, you know, I, 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 this is, this might be also being my training as an actor. I, I always, I can, I always fall back on technique, you know, yeah, yeah. the, the, here is the craft, here is what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. All that, that other voice over there, you just need to sit in a corner for a second and let me just get through it yes. and uh, you know just don't let it stop you yes. that that feeling of you know it really is a feeling of not being good enough or mm -hmm. insecurity or um really you know letting what other people may or may not think of you yeah. determine you know the choices that you make and the things that you you know uh, uh act towards achieving yeah um it's a form of it's actually it's it's weird, but it's like a, it's a form of, 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 I think being like egotistical, yeah. which is so different from what way. people usually think. Well, people usually think that being egotistical is, um, thinking you're greater than everybody mm -hmm. else, you know, mm -hmm. putting yourself really high. Mm -hmm. But I also think that it can also be the opposite. It can be, well, why do you, I know for me anyway, sometimes I think I'm like less than other people you know i see everybody for, like you i'm so surprised to hear you say what you're saying like i see you're out here you're doing your thing and you're executive producer and you're like are you talking about me the world and yes making all these wonderful <laughs> things happen and then and you know and then you have that moment like you yeah. got your premiere at pan african film festival like, yes. you have that moment where you're like i wore the wrong dress <laughs> and, I look foolish. and i'm about to go up and say these things i'm going to tell you you weren't supposed to read me that to know in, this, in this moment Yes. That I don't know what I'm doing yeah, and that yeah. I don't belong here. Like, yeah. But I but you see but then you see I, form of Yes. Yes. And you know it's it's good though to have that one person that you can share that with when you have to be a certain or wear a certain persona for the rest of the world. It's good to find that one person. So even if we're talking to someone who is at work and has to be strong for their employees or you know for the family it's always good to have that one person that you can just debrief with, I think, you know. I, Your I think it's important. Stone. I think it's important. You mm -hmm. know what? We have to take in a few messages, Tatiana. When we come back, I want to hear all about Hazra, which is your production company. Yes. And we're going to talk about... Yes. Uh, 
yeah, we're going to talk about probably some of your projects. And I know you're an, an activist. I know you hold very strong views. And I love that about you. And we're going to talk a little bit about the death of John Lewis and how it impacted you as he just recently passed. So let's take in a few messages. Come right back here on We'll Talk. This is World Talk, where we share with you inspiring stories from around the world. And, you know, it's so wonderful to have on the program today. I'm so excited. Can you feel it? Tatiana Ali, live from Los Angeles, who's joining us right now. Tatiana, before the break, I said I wanted to talk about your production company, Hazra. But first of all, I want to know, where did you get the name Hazra from? Hazra is my grandmother's name on my ah, father's side. Okay. Um, uh, uh, yeah, Trinidadian woman. And uh, <laughs> Hazra means presence. Yes. And when my sister and I formed the company, um, that's what we were hoping to achieve, to have yes. some kind of presence. And also to have a presence for people of color. When we started the company in, I think, 2006, mm -hmm. there was uh, there was very little on American television anyway um, mm -hmm. with, with people of color. Very so, few shows. It's, it's totally different now, which is wonderful. And what's your focus? What sort of programming do you go after? Do you do everything or do you have a focus? Um, it's been... You know, we we started with a web series called Buppies, and mm -hmm. it was a, a digital series for for BT. Uh, that was back in two thousand six. So we mm -hmm. were one of their first digital series, um, and that was a story about um, a group of friends, black friends. Buppies means black yuppies, <laughs> and um, <laughs> um, uh, just like living their lives and we just thought that they were characters that at that time yeah. you know we hadn't seen before on television um the other program we did uh on tv one network was love that girl and that was executive produced also by I martin remember that. yes yeah, yeah that was um comedy um uh, a character that i also hadn't seen before and i got a chance to play her mm -hmm. um so so at the time, we just, you know, here's what, here's what, why we started the company. We were all knocking on the same doors. Yes. Asking for people to let us in. Yeah. And, and asking for work. Mm -hmm. And we basically looked around in the hallway and said, hey, wait, you use a camera. You know, <laughs> all the talent is yes. in this hallway. Mm -hmm. Why are we asking for permission? Let's do it ourselves mm -hmm. um and so uh yeah that's 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 uh still what we're doing as i said i've been writing so yeah. that's gonna probably be that written content that i'm working on is probably yeah. going to be where the company goes next what what do you prefer now that you are behind the camera producing acting which one do you prefer <laughs> Can I say all? I like yes, that. Yes, you all. can. Yes. I I, I'll never. <laughs> I would say <laughs> all. Yeah, and they feed each yes. other. You know, the more I learn about producing, the more mm -hmm. I learn about writing, the more I, I, I learn more about mm -hmm. acting mm -hmm. and what my job is in telling that story as an actor. Mm -hmm. It's all about storytelling, whichever, yeah. you know, all, all of these different roles. Um, mm -hmm. And, and the, the more I've been able to kind of jump around to these different roles, I get a larger understanding of what it takes to tell a story and hopefully how to tell a story well, because that's the goal. Um, and hopefully to tell stories that, um, you know, that, that matter to people, that make people yeah. feel that, that, that uh, you know, we, so we can learn about each other. 
Do you think you will end up directing? You think you're going to go into directing? I think, you know, I now I say yes. I think I will, and I yeah. and I think I will because there are stories that um, I have in mind that I see so clearly. Yes, and it would be ridiculous and torture to hire somebody to be a director <laughs> and then go, hey, hey, wait, wait, wait. Um, you know, uh, I don't think it should be that. Like that's crazy. Yeah. So yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm. I'd like to try. Yeah. So let's talk about you as an activist. I saw a little bit of it when we were in London for home again, but I will not tell that story right now. That passionate, <laughs> that, that passionate person behind, you know, uh, truth and integrity and all of that that that's bundled up inside of you. But I want to talk about the Black Lives Matter and the fact that John Lewis, who is such a tremendous figure, passed in the middle of Black Lives Matter. And I think so much is still on the table. What are your thoughts on, you know, his passing, him, and what's happening now with the Black Lives Matter movement? Um, I think that, uh, you know, when the when the protests first started, uh, not this, this at the passing of George Floyd, they started, you know, seven yeah. years before that. Yeah. But when the protests start, first started here, I think the initial um, people initially weren't sure what kind of protests they were or to even call them protests. I think that was a fight initially to, to really define what was happening um, on the streets and what our young people were, were being involved in as protests. Mm -hmm. um, um, and when you look at there's good trouble is this incredible yes. documentary that, yeah. uh, is out right now. And Erica Alexander produced it. And, um, if you watch that story, you can't help, but think of the men and women who are on the ground right now, mm -hmm. you know, where, where, if you really look at the leadership of the Black Lives Matter movement, I think, you know, we're looking at future uh, John Lewis's. Mm -hmm. And um, um, his passing signals, you know, the, the, a new era, I think, um, <clears throat> and, a, and a, a passing of that torch. And yeah. I thought it was amazing to hear that he, you know, he was writing to other Congress people and working Mm -hmm. on the day that he died he was yes. he was so tireless in his efforts um and had so much hope and and belief in america as a place where you know this dream of equality and democracy could actually could could really be achieved yeah. even though it's not completely achieved yet and although um, he was a civil rights uh, leader for in the U.S., I found that his message resonated around the world. You know, his message that could have been uh, transferable to any country where there's injustice mm -hmm. existing. You know, mm -hmm. so you were part of the Barack Obama campaign as a surrogate. What is a surrogate? I always wondered what that meant. What's a what's a surrogate? Yeah. A surrogate, the campaign will send you to uh, places where they feel that you'll be um, of service, mm -hmm. um, places where they feel um, volunteers, uh, you know, uh, uh, in need a visit. There's, yeah. oh, I love, that was uh, Kamala <laughs> Harris is there. That was yeah. 2012, um, uh, right before she became attorney general, yes. um, I think. And... Uh, uh, so yeah, you travel around and you you share that message. You, we shared Obama's message. That picture there is actually was taken in Iowa during the primaries, and yes. we were going around to college dorms and actually teaching people how to say his name. Like wow. that's it was just to 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 watch what transpired was really it was so inspiring it's just a, a time that i will never forget in my life just yeah. what people are capable of yes when there is good leadership and when they uh come together uh like you use the word integrity when there's integrity in leadership you mm -hmm. can really work tirelessly for a cause when that's yes. the case and that was the case we registered a lot of voters and many times it, it didn't matter whether we were registering Democrats or Republicans, yes. the idea was to register as many people as possible so that 
people could have their voices heard. Yeah. So this program is about inspiration and you are here to provide a little bit of inspiration. You probably provided a ton already, but we're going to take it a few messages and come right back because I want to talk about how do you keep yourself inspired, motivated, and what words you want to share with our public that social media is going crazy right now. And I want you to share some words with them. Okay. So we'll be back after this. <laughs> Welcome back to World Talk, where we share inspiring stories from wonderful people all over the world. And today we're chatting with the lovely Tatiana Ali. And so many of you are saying, I'm seeing all the thumbs up and the hearts and the love. And one person said she nailed the Trini accent. There you go. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Let's see what my dad says when I get <laughs> Oh, please like, give him a massive hug for him. You know, I love your dad so much. He's just I so will, awesome. He's just so awesome. So, um, you know, how do you keep yourself inspired and motivated to go on and to do the things that you're doing? And how would what would you share in terms of others looking at this now and thinking, you know, if Tatiana can do it, so can I. What's the message? Oh my goodness. Um, what's the message? The message is, um, the message is, I think it has to, I think I have to go back to that, to what we were talking about before. Um, the message is not to stop yourself. You know, I think there are, obviously there are circumstances that can present themselves around us yes. that can be block roads and hindrances. Absolutely. Yeah. But if there is, I'm inspired when I, I'm actually, I, I allow myself to, I can be inspired when I spend enough time mm -hmm. in silence, looking inward, there's inspiration everywhere, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, if your eyes are open. And the first thing that you, the first thing to do is to really look inside because I do believe that everybody is sent here with a purpose. You know, everybody is sent here with a calling and there are hints that you can get along the way, you know, what you're attracted to, what, what you're interested in, what makes you wanna dance, what excites you, what gets you like riled up and angry and ready to fight. You know, those are, those are clues and they tell you what you're passionate about. Do the work. Once you know what that is, and sometimes it's on the tip of our tongues and we're just afraid to say it, say it out loud and then get online, go to YouTube <laughs> university, do your applications to go to a, to go to a traditional university, whatever it is that you need to do you make you do the work yes. to get to, to get you there there's a lot of luck and all these things that people talk about yes but the people let's say will smith for example or i mean just i've gotten a chance to work with really incredible people in my life mm -hmm. lisa wickham for example mm -hmm. um so many people these are hard hard working people Aww, you know you. it doesn't it's not it is. It's 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 it, and it and it's because there's a passion there that makes it feel to the person who's doing it. Some days feel like work. Other days feel like fun. Oh, you just can't like, get enough. Yes, because, yes. yes fun. It's like fun because yeah. it's your passion. Yeah. But the work is there. If you mm -hmm. are willing to do the work, 
the universe comes to meet you. Oh, absolutely. It's an incredible... I'm with you It's there. an incredible yes. truth about, about the world that we yeah. live in. There are no shortcuts. And, and there are no shortcuts. No. No shortcuts. You do that work. Yeah. yeah. And somehow a door opens. Yes. Or somebody texts you out of nowhere or yes. stops you on the street or says, hey, man. And you go, oh my gosh, that's exactly what I've been thinking yeah. of. And, mm -hmm. I, and I'm ready. I'm yes. prepared. Yeah. I'm ready for the opportunity and to walk through the door. So do your work. Don't worry about what's going on outside. Mm -hmm. Do your work, whatever yeah. it is that you're called to do, because the world needs you, you know? Yeah. Oh. We're learning that more than ever now. We, yeah. need, we need good people and we, we need... Do good voices, good yes. people to follow their callings because there are maniacs in the world right now yes. who, for some reason, <laughs> they are the most confident people in the world. Yeah. I don't know why that is. <laughs> well, <laughs> we, well we have to step up, which is, why it, but you know, which is why I do this program, because I want to inspire the persons who can do good, who can be inspired to step out, to not be afraid, yes. to be confident to know themselves, to love themselves, and then to really transform the lives of others. You know, it just takes one person to transform the life of another person, and another person, and another person, a ripple effect, and then suddenly you have a tsunami of good taking place in the world. Yes. You know? Yeah. Yes. So, you know, we're out of time. <laughs> can't believe it. It's half an hour already. But we could chat for hours, but we can't right now. But I just want to thank you so much. I know you have your two babies to go back to. Oh, they're so, I they're do, so precious. I do. They're so precious. Oh. So I just want to thank you so much. I can't so wait much. for you to meet them. I know, I know. You know, I was supposed to be coming back to LA and then COVID happened. So, you know, here we are. Don't we're, come here now. We're Don't virtual. come here now. Uh-uh. We, well, we can't. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> we can't. We can't. Tatiana, thank you so much for spending this uh, 30 minutes with us. And on behalf of all the persons on Facebook and YouTube and Instagram, just looking at it, I just want to thank you for sharing those little nuggets of inspiration here on World Talk and continue to be blessed as you are. You too, my lady. Wow. Thank you for inviting me. Sending you a big kiss. <laughs> all right. That was Tatiana Ali there live from Los Angeles. And, uh, you know, I just feel so wonderful whenever I chat with her. She's just a bundle of joy and light and inspiration. And that's exactly what we're doing here on World Talk. Remember, if you missed an episode or you want to see this one, log on to the YouTube channel. It's Lisa Wickham on YouTube. There it is. And uh, you can subscribe and you'll be able to see previous episodes as well as reruns of this one. And if you enjoyed this and would like us to continue, it's a team of creatives, guys, including Heaven Sent Productions, Inomedia, uh, Genesis Productions Limited, Leroy Smart, and Imagine Media coming together, working together. You know, the idea was to come through COVID and have, you know, work that we can do to help inspire you. Go on to www.fundmetnt.com and uh, just, you know, put whatever you want to put so that we can continue to keep this series alive. I want to say special thanks to National Gas Company Limited and Digicel for supporting the series. Until next time, be good to yourself. Stay strong and wonderfully positive next time on World Talk. Bye.